Hey there, everyone. Today, we're diving into an awesome project that is creating a pet store from scratch using Wix. I'm here to walk you through every step of the way, highlighting the cool features Wix offers and how to customize them just right. And even if you're trying to start a business site or maybe a personal portfolio instead, these tricks will still come in handy. I've made sure it's as simple as possible to follow, so whatever your expertise with site making is, you're not going to feel lost and you'll be right at home. And if you don't have Wix, you can use it for free by clicking the link in the description. Just a heads up though, if you want your site to go live, you're going to need to buy a domain, which does cost extra. Good news is, our link gets you a 10% discount. I do get compensation when you use the link, but remember, just getting a domain doesn't get you all the cool features like being able to accept payments or unlimited bandwidth. Those come with the bigger plans. So if you want the full experience, you might want to look into those. That being said though, let's get started. So it's really easy to actually start making your site on Wix because you're not bogged down with too many details. All you have to do is click on get started from their homepage, then it'll take you here to create your account. And once you've done that, you'll be taken through a tutorial. But since this is a tutorial, I'll be showing you all of this myself, meaning you can just skip these two pages. You'll then be greeted with the dashboard, but there are still some more questions you'll be asked, like the name of your site. Not really important right now, so just go ahead and skip the next three questions as well, because we'll cover them as we go along, and then some. So, once you've skipped all of those, you can finally continue to the dashboard. From here, go to the top right and click on Design Site, where on the next page, you'll be asked whether you want Wix to make a site for you, or if you want to do it yourself. We're gonna go with the latter. Following this, we'll find a page where you can look for a particular template. To make this easier, you can look through the categories up here, which include business sites, stores, maybe you're creative so you want a site for your arts, community sites are great for tutoring or wedding caterers, or perhaps you have a blog in mind. Whatever it is, you can scroll through the templates available and you can preview it by hovering over it and selecting view. From there, you just have free range to check out this site in its entirety to see whether it's something you like. And if you do, you can go to the top right and click on edit this site to use it. Otherwise, you can go back to templates. Furthermore, on the right side of the sites or the page rather, you can filter through which templates you want, whether that's all of them, the blank ones, or see which templates are new and most popular. Now, we're starting from scratch, so I'll pick the blank ones. And as you can see now, they're more cookie cutter, where you can place your content directly. I want the entirely blank one, so to use it, like we said, just hit on edits. On the next page, you'll find the Wix creative dashboard, where we have our tools and other settings that'll aid us in making our site. Most importantly, on the left hand side, our tools consist of the elements where you can grab all sorts of bits and pieces like pictures, text boxes, and cool buttons to really personalize your site and more that we'll find out soon. Now, the sections tab consists of just that, different sections that you can add. Wix has some templates that you can use, but you can also start with a blank slate. Next up is where we manage our menu and pages, which is super convenient that it's in one place, as you'll come to find. And just below this is the site design, where we can choose the site's theme and also mess around with the color palette. Below that is the Wix App Store, which we'll need to use later on to be able to add items to our website and more. And generally, the Wix Store app is such a saving grace because it really makes everything so much more convenient, but we'll get to that eventually. Now, the My Business tab helps you manage your online shop and website, offering tools for selling and talking to customers. As you can see here, it already includes the chat box. This already helps you keep track of all of your apps, which you'll see once we add some. The next tab is the Media tool, which is where we'll be adding pictures and they'll be stored here subsequently. And lastly is the content management system, which helps you keep your website's text and pictures neat and lets you update your site easily. However, it's not something I can really do justice in this video because it's a very deep system that requires a video in of itself. So subscribe to stay in the loop for when I upload that. It's also not integral to this tutorial either, so we'll be fine. Moving back to the top here, we have a section where we can easily switch between the pages on our site. 
To the right of that, you can also switch layouts between desktop and mobile. Wix does a pretty good job of adapting the desktop changes you make to the mobile site, but we won't be focusing on the mobile side of things, but you can switch layouts as you go along to see what it looks like. Above this in site, you can save, preview, get feedbacks from Wix themselves on your site, publish, and then view it on desktop, but also get a QR code to see what it looks like on your phone. In settings, you can work on your SEO and update your business information. In dev mode, you can add code, and in help, you can search the editor and the editor help center. On the right-hand side, you can save your progress, preview the site in another tab, then publish it once you're ready. A neat thing about Wix is that if you hover over a section on your page and click on quick edits here, you can see an overview of your whole site and quickly replace certain elements, which we'll get into once we get plugin away. Which brings me to my next point. So every site has a header, footer, and the content in between. To get started with making our site, let's begin with customizing the menu. To do that, head over to the pages and menu tab and create a few menu items. Now, go to the top right of this window and click on add page. From here, you can select various templates ranging from an about us page to a 404 error page. Since we're using a blank one, we'll click on blank page in the top left, and then it'll take you back to this window to name it. I'll call this one pet essentials and then hit done. And there you go, one page is made. We'll revisit that page later on, but now you know how to do it. And so I'm just gonna use that same method to make my health and grooming and accessory pages. Now that I've done that, I can add these to my menu by going to the elements tab up here and finding the menu and anchor section. Here you have a variety of menus to choose from, whether that's themed, which means it's handpicked to match your site's theme. Then there's the horizontal themes, which are presets that have different colors and designs. And the same idea also applies to the vertical menus too. Moreover, an anchor is something that you would use if you want to direct a customer to a specific part of the page that they're on, instead of taking them to a whole different page. Now, the great thing about Wix is that it's drag and drop. So to add something to my preview, I'll just pick one of the themed menus and drag it over to the right and drop it into my header. It's also very convenient that Wix immediately applies your pages to your menu items, saving us some time. You'll also notice that there's this orange highlight on the header, which means that this is going to be present on every page. Anything highlighted in orange is consistent throughout your whole site, and this purple highlight means that it's just for this page. Additionally, these grid lines here are the boundaries for smaller screens, so anything outside of them might not show up on the mobile or iPad version of your site, for example. But if you want to alter any of these changes, well, you can simply adjust it in the mobile tab, and it will adapt accordingly. Fortunately, like I said, Wix makes sure it accommodates the layout. As you can see here for the mobile version, the menu is organized into these stacks. So just keep that in mind. Now let's head back to our desktop editor and put the menu in a better spot. Further to the right works for me since it just makes sense in my head, but you might want it to be centered or some other version of a menu I haven't thought of. Following this, I need to add my logo. So we'll head down to the media tab. Here you can search for stock images, upload your own. You can also edit your photos and make videos with this option. And then the rest of the things here are stock photos and videos. To upload something, you can click on upload media right here or go to the top and click on upload media from there. It'll pop up with this window where you can find the file directly or just open the file up yourself and then drag whatever images you have. The pictures I have are some that I found, so in case that you were wondering, well, they're just something I found on Google. I always recommend, though, to gather all of your images into one file so that you can easily access them and save yourself time. So what I'll do is drag all of these pictures into Wix so I don't have to keep going back and forth. All right, so now that all my photos have been transferred over to Wix, let's apply my logo to my website. So this is my logo right here, Whiskers and Wonders. I made it using a website called Canva. You can edit photos and do all kinds of cool things like make logos with it. So if you wanna try that out, I'll put a link to that website down below in the description. And if you want to use an AI bot that just makes it for you, you can use a website called PhotoLeap where you can describe what you want the photo to be and it will make it for you. So. I'll put a link to both of those websites in the description below. So to apply any of our pictures to our website, just click on said picture 
and I'm going to add it to page using this blue button. Now, this whole header has been resized because, well, the picture is bigger than the header. So to resize our photo, we just want to grab it by the edges here and then minimize it. Now, the rest of the header has also been expanded. So to shorten it a bit, we just go on to the edge of this rectangle and then we minimize it. Now, these notifications that you have here are just um, kind of warnings so that you know, okay, you're doing this. This is what the uh, consequence of that will be. Um, so just don't pay too much attention to that. If there's anything you need to know, I will make sure that you know it. So we're just gonna readjust our header up here and make sure that it is to our liking. So just make sure that it balances out very nicely. And so now let's take a look at what this header looks like in a preview so we know what it would actually look like when a customer or viewer comes to see it. To do so, just go to the top right and click on preview and you can see everything without all the clutter. So that looks good to me. Let's go back to the editor now. So to do so, just click on back to editor in the top right. The next thing you should know is that you can rearrange the menu items. So if you click on the menu, you'll see a whole toolbar that we'll get through as we go along through the video. And to manage the menu, click on manage menu here. And to switch things up, you can just grab it and then move it over top of another one like this. So that's generally how it works. Nothing too complicated, but I'm just going to keep the same essence of what we had before. So pet essentials first and then everything else afterwards. So that's how you rearrange the menu. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the footer and start adding things to the footer so we can get those two things out of the way. The header and the footer are the most, let's say, menial tasks that we have. And then we can get to the fun part, which is customizing the middle part of our website and everything else. Now, before we go ahead and customize our footer, there's an important thing that we need to do. So we need to go to the top and click on our main menu and select this settings button because when we click on it, it's going to ask us if we want to set this main menu to be advanced. And we do because this allows us the freedom to add individual items to our main menu and our footer menu without having any crossover. Trust me, it saves you a world of a headache. So now we just go to the uh, pages and menu tab. We add a first page that is the address page and I'm going to add the rest of the pages. Well, in the background, obviously. So we're just going to create this page click done. And now I'm just going to add the three other pages that I have in mind, which are the socials, frequently asked questions and privacy in terms of service. So now we're going to go back to our elements up here, click on the menu and anchor, and we're going to drag them down to the footer. And I know you're thinking, well, you just said there's no crossover between these menu items. Well, don't worry, I got you covered. So click on the settings and you're going to have to set this one as advanced as well. And there you go. Now it's adapted to have the other items that we included. Now, I don't want to have the home uh, menu item on here. So I'm just going to click on these three dots and I'm going to hide this from my menu. Now, I don't have the privacy in terms of service items. So we're going to click on add menu item site pages and we're just going to find it. So privacy in terms of service, we're going to apply it. And there you go. Who's working for your buddy? All right, so let's touch upon the other items on this toolbar so we already know what the Manage menu does. The Navigate allows you to navigate to other pages that you have made. The Settings, well, that's just how you uh, activate the Advanced menu. The Layout is also very simple, so this allows you to determine the uh, spacing and alignments and how the text is set up and which direction the text goes. Now, what these two options, the Wrap and Scroll, mean, so basically, if you have too many items in your container, this orange rectangle is the container, then it will put the rest of the menu items on a line below that. So if you fill out this container, it's just gonna put something below that. So it's gonna start a whole new line. And the scroll is, if you have a lot of those items, it's just going to allow the audience or the viewer rather to scroll through the rest of the menu items. So it's simple as that. And for the rest of these things, well, it's just your typical spacing and alignment options. Like you see here, you can move these to the right to the center, and then the text can be reversed to be in the other direction. Of course, we're not in Japan, so we're going to keep it left to right, and that's how that works. Now, the sub menu allows you the option of making a drop down menu. So if you want to drop down menu for one of these options, then you can do that from here. And the mega menu is not really something that I've used. As it says, it's a more robust version of a menu, but we're not going to dive into that because similarly, to the um, 
to the CMS settings, it's very complicated. So we're not gonna touch upon that. I don't feel like I can do it justice. Now, the next thing is the design. So the design is similar to the menu options we had in the elements tab. So you have the other templates and the presets that they've made for you. And so it's not too detailed there. But once you go into the customized design section, you can customize very, very specific things such as the background, the borders, corners shadows and the layout now i don't use this very frequently but if you want to touch upon those areas then you can customize it to your liking and be more specific and the menu containers so essentially what this does is as you can see i mentioned the container so this whole rectangle box is the container so you can customize that entirely or the menu items individually so if you want to touch upon those different aspects of your menu then you can do so but for now we're good to go and then lastly is the animation or second to last uh, the animation option allows you to customize how this menu pops in when someone visits your website or reaches that part of the page. So it's pretty neat. We're going to use this on different parts of our website. We don't need all this fancy stuff for our uh, footer, so we're going to keep it simple. And then lastly is the stretch, which I actually want to use. So what this does allows you to stretch your menu items across a certain section. So let's do this. So to do so, you click on stretch to full width right here. You enable it and you can see how it spreads across. Now, I want to keep it a little more to the center because it looks awkward if it's too far apart. So we're going to bring this a little closer to the middle and 66 works just fine. So there we go. Now we have spread our menu items. And the next thing we need to do is just give ourselves a little more room in this section so we can put some other information. And the first thing we need to cover is our address. So we'll start by adding text, which means we head over to the elements tab. And the first option is the text. We have our themed text, which we already know about. Then the titles, which are essentially just different fonts you can pick from. Then the paragraphs, which we're going to use, as well as some collapsible text to include the info, but save the space. And lastly is the text mask, which allows you to place a background or picture behind your text like they do here. Now let's head back to the paragraphs and drag this block into our footer. To find the format options, you click on edit here. You can change the heading depending on the size that you want. The font is also below here so you're not stuck with the one that you chose from the elements tab. Right under that is the size of your text, which we will increase. This right here is your typical bold, italicize, and underline, as well as changing the color of the text. There's two options that allow you to change your alignment as well, that being here and the line spacing. The effects are similar to the animations, you just change the texture and depth of your text. Lastly is your vertical text, which is pretty straightforward. Enable this so it's vertical. To undo things, by the way, I figure you should know, you just hit this backwards arrow in the top right, and to redo it, you just hit the other arrow going forward. And I will undo this change because, well, I don't want it to be vertical. Now I'll just include my address and edit this to be slightly larger and bold so that it stands out. It takes some tries to get it lined up, which is why I use the preview to make sure it fits just right. So now that I've set the address and lined it up, we can go ahead and add our socials, which you can find in the elements tab and head down to social to find. You have a variety of individual platforms to pick from like Facebook or Pinterest, but I personally go with the social bar since it has more variety. So we'll grab this one here and drop it into our footer. Now to add your own social links, you just click on set social links and then you select any of these platforms, go to the right here where this URL is, and then you would include your own URL. You can also change whether or not you want this to open in a new window or a current window. I recommend a new window so you're not taking your customer totally off your site. So when you're done with that, just exit out of this and then click on done. Now the layout options gives you the option to change the icon size and spacing, as well as making this horizontal or vertical. Now, I'm not going to make this vertical in my footer, but I will make it vertical in another part of my site. So what I'm going to do here is right click. And when you right click, you get a variety of options. So I'm going to make this duplicate and then layout again, hit vertical. And then we're going to drag this all the way to the right side of our page, right to the edge. And then we're going to right click again and then pin this to the screen. Now it's gonna give you an option to set where you want this to be pinned. It can be at the top, which obviously you won't do, or to the side. Now I'm gonna leave it in the middle right there. And then once you're happy with whatever alignment you want, you just hit 
x right there and then now when we go to preview up top we can see how this stays put when we scroll through our site so it's pretty neat not a huge innovation but still something worth trying out so let's head back to our editor now the last thing we need to do in our footer is just to add some text below the faq so we'll go grab some paragraph text from the elements drag it into the footer put some text in there something about go check out our FAQ or something, adjust the size, and then simply align it to balance everything out. There we go. So now let's preview this sucker one more time to see how everything's looking before we move on. I just want to make sure that everything is balanced when we go over here. And from the looks of it, we did good. The main menu is set up just right. And when we scroll further down to the footer, all of our edits were applied nicely and we don't have to worry about the menu now. If I click on the FAQ, for instance, it takes us to that designated page. Of course, we have nothing on here, but it works, which is the most important thing. So now let's head back to our editor and change the site design, though right now we're still on the FAQ page. So just remember to check which page you're on when making edits by going to the top left and selecting it. I'll go back to the home page in this case. From here, head to the site design tab, which will be the fourth one down. First, let's check out the site theme. So what these are is a variety of themes that you can immediately apply to your site. For example, let's go down and pick the natural theme. And you're also not stuck with this theme either. You can go back using this backwards arrow and click on color theme to change the palette itself, adding your own flavor by clicking on these bars and tweaking it to your liking. Now, these up here are your base colors, so these affect your background and text. Then the accent colors are colors you pick to make parts of your site stand out, like buttons and links. Going back now, the text theme allows you to pick the font for both your heading and paragraph text across your whole site. A cool thing about this is that you can add languages really easily just by clicking down here and selecting it. And you can add your own fonts too if you want. So you have quite the variety of choices here. Now, the page backgrounds are exactly what you think they are. You can select a whole image to be applied to your background or even a video. As you can see here, when I click on this picture, it takes over the whole page. It's not my cup of tea in particular, but maybe you can find a use for it. And lastly, for this section, we have the page transitions, which is also pretty straightforward. You can spice up how it looks when a customer switches between pages. Of course, all my pages are the same now, so I can't really show you the difference, but perhaps later on, I'll come back to this. And there you go. That wraps up the site design tab. Let's get to stripping now. And by that, I mean going to the elements tab up here and heading down to the strip option. Now you do have some feature templates available to you, but we're not gonna use those because, well, we're starting from scratch and we wanna make this our own. So I'm gonna grab this, place it into the preview, and I'll just minimize this a little bit. And you have this toolbar here that is kind of arbitrary because it changes once we've added a column. So just stick with me. So you can change these strip backgrounds similar to the site design over here. You, you can uh, customize the background scroll effects. So when scrolls past this, it can either fade in or fade out. We'll play with that as well. Then we have the layout, which is how we can add a column. This gets in a little more depth once you've added a column. So I'll touch upon that in a second. Then you can change the shape of the strip. So there's that option as well. It's very flexible, which I like, but I don't see any use for this, for this tutorial at least. Then the last thing is the stretched. So you can either stretch your strip to be the width of the screen or the width of the page. So you can see what you like, what fits you better. Now we're going to right click here and I'm going to add a column. Now you can see that the entirety of this strip is changed because we can't change the strip background by itself. So we have to click on one side of the column and now we can do so. So we can manage the columns in a different way now. So we can add a column through this or we can select which column we want to use by either clicking on it or just picking which one we want from here. Now, we don't need any use for that right now. We're going to click on this column and I'm going to change the column background and I'm going to click on color right here. And the theme colors are obviously the ones that we selected from a moment ago. So it's very handy. Now I'm going to select an orange background for the left side and on the right side, all you got to do is just click here, change the column background, go to colors again, 
and then I'm gonna go with something a lot more peachy and there we go so we change the backgrounds now the next thing we need to do is we need to add text and pictures to fill this section out a little more and as you know to do that we got to go back to the elements tab at the top left here and select one of these headings so I'm gonna go with the third heading because it's a nice balance between the other sizes and here I'm gonna be promoting pedigree so I'll write something in relation to that and that should be perfectly fine now let's just adjust this to be in a perfect spot and the next thing i need to do is just change the font because i'm not liking the avenir light we'll go with the azure mono and then change the size again and of course when you change the size of anything your strip is going to change accordingly so you just grab it at the bottom here and just drag it a little higher up and then we're going to just make this bold really quickly and take advantage of the space we have in this column. So I want to make sure that it's all aligned and then spread it across the rest of this strip. So we might as well take advantage of it because we want it to be front and center and something that our customers can see. And that looks to be perfectly fine for me. Now, I'm not sure about the font. I think this might just be a result of the font. Yeah, so I wrote it per perfectly fine. The font just makes it look like that. So yeah, there we go. So we added the text. Now the next thing we need to add is the pictures on the right side. And again, of course, like clockwork, we go to the top left in the elements, head down to the image. And here we just wanna go to our library, which is the site images and click on show more. So I'm just gonna scroll through this to find a pedigree product. There we go. Head to add to page. And then all I have to do here is just to adjust the parameters or the size of this picture. Now, this is relatively easy to do. The most important thing is how you want to adjust this because I'm going to add two other pictures in this section. And now that I have done that, I'm just going to go add the other two pictures and then we'll proceed with the rest of what we need to do. All right, so I added the other two pictures and you can see how they're all lined up perfectly fine, but there's another piece missing here and that is a button. So we're gonna swoop down to the buttons or swoop up to the buttons, I suppose, and that's in our elements tab. And we're gonna go down to our third option here, which are the buttons. So we're knocking these down as we come across them. So you have similar to these other sections that we've touched upon, you have various versions of buttons and various versions of this particular object that you can try out. There's these different icon buttons that you can look through and images that you can try as well. But uh, what I want for my uh, strip here is to add a theme button right here. So we're going to grab this and we're going to drag it. Oh, not that far. Whoopsies. We're going to drag it right here and make sure that it is centered and not out of place. All right. So we're going to move that a little bit to the right. Now, there's a key thing that we need to do here. So we need to name it. Now, of course, just like the other sections we've touched upon, you can change certain things on this toolbar. So you can change the layout, which involves if you want to have the text, if you want to have the text and, uh, for example, an arrow, which is the icon, and you can change where the icon is pointing like that, for example, but we don't want to do that. So we're going to have the text only, and I'm going to align this. So of course, this comes in handy. So align it in accordance to, well, naturally where you want it to be, but I don't know why you'd want it to be out of alignment. Now you can also have only the icon or you can have nothing, which isn't the most efficient, but it doesn't look great, but Hey, people have different tastes and you can change the design here. So similar to what we did with some backgrounds, we can check the customized design options and you have the same kind of tools here. So you have the background fill, so you can make this a black background. You can change the text, the font and the coloring here. And it's very similar to what you did with the, uh, with the text here. So nothing too different, but it has the same kind of essence that you can customize it yourself. And you have a lot of options here, corners, shadows, and also whether or not you want the icon to be shown at all. But we touched upon that uh, earlier on in the and the layouts. Now, what I do want to do is I want to just change the text here. So we're going to change this. So we're directing the viewer or the customer to where we want them to go. So we're going to change the text here and I'm just going to write, check it out. And that looks fine. No spelling mistakes. And now what we want to do is click on here because obviously you want to send the customer to the right page. So you click on links to choose a link and I want to send the customer to the, uh, to the pet essentials. So to choose a page, just click up here. This, uh, well, the settings, the menu options here will pop up or you can add a new page if you want, if you want to do it uh, two on one, which is very efficient. Like I said, Wix is very efficient. I love how it works. Now, what I want to do is click on pet essentials and click done here. And then now when we go to our preview, it will take us to that page. So we're just going to exit out of this. Let's check it out in our preview. And we're going to click here and it takes us to that page. So let's go home 
and go back to our editor. So we've made our first strip, we've customized it, and now we just got to do the rest for the subsequent sections on our page. So let's get to it and let's get plugging away. So to do that, we go to our elements up top again, and then we go to strip. So we pick our first strip bar. Is that going to get me in trouble? No, we'll go with it. So this is our strip bar and place it into the preview. And I'm going to, it's a little awkward right now. So we're going to have to readjust the edges here. So we're going to have to pull up the strip here from its box. And then once I adjust this, we're going to do the same for the section bar. So the section bar is just, just below here and you can grab it by grabbing these uh, arrows and pull it up and you'll know when it's in line. Once we have this this highlight yeah so we have like a faded highlight over this strip bar i shouldn't probably say that too much but now we're going to add a column so we're going to add a column by right clicking and adding a column that way or just going to the toolbar and adding it through the manage columns option over here i'm going to add text so i'm going to be promoting some uh automatic dog feeder so we're going to grab our text we're going to go down here actually i'm going to take the big title place it right here and you'll see what i'm talking about once i just put the picture we're going to get there eventually so i'm going to put massive capacity as one of the qualities of this dog feeder and i'm going to change the color so i'm going to make it peachy as uh, again to match our theme now it doesn't be, seem to show up so if it doesn't show up just highlight the text itself go back to the colors and then click on it and then it will work so keep that in mind in case it's not showing up okay so i've adjusted the text box i've aligned it now let's go and right click here I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it into the other two columns so I don't have to go back to the elements tab and then do this all over again. So it makes my life a lot easier. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and add the other two uh, descriptors for my uh, dog feeder and then we'll get to actually making that section itself. And to add the section, we're going to go an alternative route. So we're going to add the section using this button here, just hovering in between sections. And as we did before on the left hand side, we can grab these templates, but we don't like to live life easy. We're going to grab a blank section. And after I adjust this again, I want to add some text, which is obviously crucial because I want to name my brand of feeder. To be fair, it's not a dog feeder in particular. It's just a general feeder. So I made a mistake there. Don't crucify me and the feeder is named as such. Now, I'm gonna save you the time of me editing this because it's not important for you to see. And then we're gonna add a button. So we're gonna add a button here so we can link it to the accessories page, but we'll do that in a second. So I'm going to just place it here, change the name, and it's gonna be find out more. We're gonna go with that instead, right? And then I'm gonna save you the time of watching me adjust that again. And the next thing is to add the, the, the image that we need. Now, the dog feeder, I made sure to grab a PNG. You wanna make sure the pictures are as clean as possible. You don't wanna have any of the backgrounds. So as we've done before, we go to the library and we scroll down, there is the feeder. And I'm just going to minimize this again. It's actually kind of fun to minimize these things because it's just a really easy layout. So again, we're gonna save you the time of watching me adjust this. But now what we need to do is add a link to this button. So go to the toolbar, click on this link. And then as we did before, choose a page and we're going to link this to my accessories page. And then there we go. Now we have one more thing to add. Actually, before we go on, I just want to talk about this sidebar because with this, you can move entire sections up or you can move them down according to what you want. And then the quick edit option actually has a little more depth to it. All of the uh, content within a particular section is here and you can change it from here. And I wanna change the background section color. So we're gonna go on color and I'm gonna choose the peach color because I want it to be in line with the rest of my theme here. Now we're gonna go back and following this, we're gonna add another section like I already mentioned, and we're gonna use the method that we used for the previous section. And here I want to include a digital book or an ebook, I suppose. And we're gonna first add the picture of the particular title that I want. And I know it's at the bottom here because I saw it when I was, yeah, this is the one. So we're gonna place this over here and I'm going to make sure that it's on the left side just to add some variety. I don't want the site to be bland. And I'm gonna save you the time uh, of me editing this. And the following thing is just the text because naturally, like I mentioned, these are this is one of the three elements that I typically like to have on my page. And I'm going to save you more time on my editing because, well, nobody wants to see my OCD. And lastly, to download this ebook, I want to add a button. Now, we're going to talk about this once we're adding contents. So once we're adding our products, I want to include uh, how we can actually 
add digital products and we'll get there very soon. So I just got to name this here and then uh, make sure that I align this to be in place. And there we go. So now the next thing we need to do is start adding our products, which is a very crucial part. And we're well over 50% of the way done. And to add the e-commerce part of our store, let's head over to the elements tab. Of course, where else would it be? And we want to find the store option, which is located near the bottom right here. We're going to click on the add to site button here, and it's going to start installing the Wix store to your sites. And when it does install, you'll have this really sweet template for you to play around with. You can change the text, the pictures, the prices. Essentially, you have the freedom to adjust this to your liking, and we'll do that soon. But on the left side, we have these filters and uh, categories, and up top are the profile and uh, cart or bag features which we'll have to change in a bit now when we look at this without all the clutter we can actually see this as a functioning site there are rotating pictures this price bar works as well so generally this really improves our quality of life and saves us time on working on something for our site so i mean i couldn't be happier trust me but that wasn't the only thing that was added throughout that installation process because if we go to the left hand side we'll see a new category called store pages in our pages section so we have the product page card page and thank you page now the product page is as it says the description for the individual product so the customer can get a closer look at this one product in particular see the description and the return and refunds policy then the next thing is the car page which is pretty self-explanatory once the customer clicks on the bag here it's going to take them to the car page and they can see what's in their car and afterwards, once they've actually bought a product, it's going to show them this thank you page, at which point they've confirmed their order and they're good to go. And the last page that Wix added is a member page all the way down here for people who have an account and want to log in or want to create an account and check things like their orders, address and update their information. And essentially, they can track their order status and things of that nature. But now let's go back to the home page so we can change the location of those profile and cart icons because I'm not liking where they are right now. And it's not that hard to customize. All I did was send them to the far right and made sure that they weren't intrusive, but that they were present and that they didn't distract anyone. So I made a fine balance between the two. And the great thing about this is that once we click on this, the drop down menu of our member page is going to show up and essentially they have access to that as well. So once they click on that, they can look through what they want. And yeah, giving that option is always key because you want the customers to feel like they have control over their purchase and their account in particular if they made an account with you and the cart page is crucial to have because well, you want to get the customer to the checkout as soon as possible. And now we're going to get to adding our products. It's about time. So let's go to the top left where it says home and then find our way down to the category page right here. And the reason why we're doing this is so we can access a few other features that we need. So first off, I'm going to click on this right here and then I'm going to click on manage products on this left side. And from here, it's going to load up a little bit and then it's going to show you your products dashboard. Now, the products that you have here are all just the presets. You might have seen them when I added the products a few moments ago, but we're going to just delete all of these by clicking on this box up here and then heading over to more actions and then deleting them very nicely. Now, from here on out, what we want to do is we want to go to the top right, actually, and you'll have two options here, physical and digital. I'll get to the digital in a moment, but it's very similar to the physical product, so it's not too much of a hassle. Now, the first thing you want to do when you add products is you want to add images. And the process is largely the same as it was when we were adding pictures uh, beforehand. So you just go down to find your picture. This is mine. And then you just click add to page over here. You can also add some more pictures if you have them. Then down below, I'm going to add a name for my product. And then the ribbon is essentially standout words for something. For example, if you have a new arrival or sale, you can make it look a little more snazzy. Then down below is the description, which just gives more context to the product. I'm just going to place my own description here that I may or may have not copied from somewhere else, but that's okay. This is a tutorial, so don't worry about it. And down below is the pricing. So this is very simple. You input the price for your product. And then if you have a sale, you can enable this option right here. And then you can put the discount that you want to place on that particular 
product. And then down below is the cost of goods, which is how much it costed you to provide this product. Then you have the profit and then the profit margin on the right side. I can't tell you what those would be because those are totally personal to you and highly customizable. But down below you have the product options, which are the variables for your product, such as size, color, weight. And I have a size, so I'm going to input my size, which is 12 by 100 grams. And then once you're done with this, just make sure to hit the enter button so that it actually saves it and you hit uh, add once you're done with that. If you want to add more variables, you can click on this option right here or to manage the pricing, enable this and you'll have all the variants of your products in this particular section. You can track the inventory by enabling this as well, and you can input how much you have in stock or disable it, and you can choose whether or not you want to label it as in stock or out of stock if you just don't want to input how much you have on your site. And then down below, you can edit the variants. You can just access that page we were just on by clicking on edit. And then you have the pre-order options as well, and then the subscriptions, although I don't really find that's too important for me to talk about right now. Now, if we scroll back up on the right side, we should address this. You have the product or tax group, which we'll touch upon soon once we get to that section. And down below is something you can add, such as the brand of your product. This is a pedigree product, so I'm just going to label label it as such. And yeah, so that's basically all we have for the for the products and how to add them. I'm going to just add the rest of my products and then we'll get to the categories in a quick minute. And now that I've added my last product, let's go back to the products dashboard so we can add that digital product. And you do that just by clicking on this product tab right here and to pick the digital product, like I mentioned earlier, just go top right and click on digital file. And similar to what I've said in the past, the information is very, very similar to the uh, physical product. You just don't have the pre-order and subscription options, but I'm sure you'll get over that. Now, what you need to do, the only difference is by clicking here, you have a variety of files that you might want to upload. I'm going to click on the audio file because that's what I'm going to upload to my website. I'm going to grab that file. Oh, wait, almost. Grab the file and place it into this and let it just process the whole file itself. Once it's done doing that, all you do is just click on it, go down to the bottom right, add a product, and there you go, much like what we did with the pictures. Now all I have left to do is to add the rest of the information here, and then we'll go back to our product dashboard. And now we're gonna add some of those categories. So to go to your categories, it's pretty simple. Go to this third tab, click on the big plus sign right here, and the first thing, on our list is to add a category name. This is gonna be Pet Essentials. Down below, add a description to add some context to this product. And over here on the right side, you can add images to include for your banner. So it's just gonna include a banner across the top of the page like this. And then finally is to add the products. So to add products, you click right here and then you pick the products you want. Now I want the pet food, so I'm gonna click on those by clicking on these circles, check marking them, and then when I'm done, hitting add. Now all of my pet food is in this category and I'm set to go. And lastly, when you're done, just make sure to save it in the top right and then it's gonna take you back to the categories dashboard. Now what's left for me to do is to add the accessories category and then we're going to place our categories onto our website. With that added now, let's head back to our website and go back to our homepage before we focus on this right here because I wanna add a category gallery to our homepage first. So to do so, let's head down and find a nice place to put this. I'm thinking right between the pet feeder and the ebook. Now, go to the blank section in the top left. Of course, we've done this before. And then it's gonna open up a whole different strip. So we're gonna head back to the elements tab, go down to the store section, and in the store section, you have a variety of templates and galleries and uh, presets that you can use and apply to your site. It's quite flexible, so you can be quite creative with them. Uh, in terms of what I'm looking for, I'm going to use the slider product gallery. And you'll notice once I place this on my website, it already has applied the changes to my categories and products list. So now I just need to adjust that. And then I'm going to add a piece of text up here, just labeling it as, let's say, what's hot so just to give it a little more flair and now i have to change the color of that strip just so it actually lines up with the rest of the page and doesn't look too basic let's say and with that taken care of let's add our pet essentials category to our pet essentials page so go to the top left click on the pet essentials tab 
And now once this loads up, go to the elements tab and we're already in the store section, so easy enough. We're gonna grab the grid product gallery because it provides all the products we want. Now you'll notice that we have a combination of all of those products, including the accessories and the pet essentials, as well as the audio or ebook rather. And I don't want that. So to change that, choose the category and then you're gonna get a grid gallery of all of the categories you've made. Here's the pet essentials one. I'm gonna close this and then you'll notice how we only have the pet essentials. So really it's as easy as that. Now, the next thing to do is to add some spice to this. And the way we're gonna do that is by clicking on the gear up here in the toolbox. And the first tab that shows up is the category tab, which we've already talked about. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that. The next tab includes certain details such as product descriptions. Now, I have most of these checked off except for the name and price divider, and that's how it looks when I have that activated. Below this is the image hover effect, which is the effect that appears when someone hovers over an image for an item. Following this is the view more products option. So if there's a lot of products, the customer can either click on the load more button or the pagination, which allows them to scroll through various pages. And then the infinite scroll is pretty self-explanatory. They just scroll until there's, well, nothing left to show. Underneath that is the add to cart button, which displays the option to add to cart from this page. So they click on this and then it will go to the cart in the top right. And then there's also the option of determining what happens when they click on that button. I like to keep it on this page because it allows the customer to keep scrolling through the rest of this page, picking other items and including quantities so they can keep track of how much they have in their bag. And then also you can show options like the size and pick how much of this item someone might want. Now the layout tab allows you to change where this information is placed. So you can stretch this to full width, which I don't personally like because it just looks really bloated. And then down below this allows you to change whether you have words in your product description or just no description at all. And I like the third one personally because it just looks the cleanest. And below this is the product alignment, which is something we've already covered a hundred times already. Underneath this is the grid behavior. So if you choose fixed, you set up how many columns and rows there are, as opposed to responsive, which adjusts the amount of rows and columns to the size of the customer screen, which I personally prefer. Then down below here are just the image placement options and you can resize it and choose the image ratio as well. And in the next tab, you can change a certain text within the add to car button or the pre-order button, as well as the out of stock message and so on and so forth. Following this is the design tab, which has a lot of depth. You can change the background, the borders, as well as the shading. So there's so much depth here. You just gotta dive into it and play around with it. Next up is the filters. So the filters show up on the left side and you have some options from the presets, but you can also add your own filters from here or hide some filters if you don't want them to show up either. The sort by options is similar to the filters, except this creates the filter for the category based on their price or name. And lastly is the quick view. Now the quick view shows up once a customer hovers over an image and then they'll get a little look-see into what the product is all about. And you can customize everything about the quick view from there. Now, all I have to do now is just adjust the size and parameter of this. I'm going to add the title labeled as the pet essentials. And now what's left to do is to move on to the more technical aspect of this, which is the policies, the shipping, the payments, you know, well, basically the last part of this video. So how about we get into it? The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up payment methods and accept payments. Now to do that, head over to the left-hand side and click on manage products, then go down to settings from the dashboard and then head over to accept payments on the right. Heads up though, in the top right, you'll see the business location. Make sure that the business location is in the location you're selling your products from. And to connect a payment method, you just go over to the right-hand side where it says connect simply. And then from here, I'm going to enable all of these payment methods so I can give the customer the option option of which one they want to use and make it more convenient for them overall. And when I hit continue, we'll confirm that you do need to upgrade to a business and e-commerce plan to actually start accepting payments. However, it is totally worth the money and investment. And you can take advantage of that 10% discount code to upgrade because let me tell you, it makes life a lot easier and it'll get you on the right foot immediately. And once you've purchased it, go down to complete setup right here. And the reason for this is you need to fill out this form to be able to receive payouts. It includes information like your address, your business details, and your bank account information. And on that note, let's head back and talk about how to set up shipping details. Now the shipping details are on the left-hand side this time. And once you click on it, you'll notice that there are two different regions already 
provided for you. So you have the domestic and then you have the international. If you want to add another region, go to add region right here and you can do so by clicking on add destination. I'm going to go with the fictional country of Canada in this case. And once you have selected your country, you can also choose which parts of that country or regions you want to sell to by clicking on edit. And then you can select or deselect any of the regions that are provided for you. Once you're done that, go down to select the shipping rate. You have anything from free shipping to a USPS calculated rate. I prefer the flat rate to keep things consistent. First thing you do is name it. And then if you know the estimated delivery time, you pick that. You set up the rates and then i like to offer free shipping when a customer buys over a certain amount so i go on 50 dollars just to incentivize them to buy more and when you're done that go to the top right and hit on save and that's pretty much all you have to do for shipping down here you'll see canada which doesn't actually exist so i can't ship to it but now let's talk about taxes we all love taxes don't we but it's actually not so bad because once we go to taxes, we can use Avalara to automate our taxes for us. So to do so, go to the top right, click on automate, and then agree to the conditions. You're just going to have to make an account with Avalara. And then once you've done that, you go down to add location. I'm going to add the United States of America, add it to that, and then choose which states I want. I can select all of them or just one of them, but I'm going to go with all of them and then go down here to make sure that it is calculated through Avalara and not manually because good grief. And then you add it and afterwards it's just going to generate all of the states, the good 51 and there you go. That's pretty much all you have to do. Just go down here to make sure that your taxes are either generated at checkout or it's already included in your price which customers would like because well free shipping. So that's how I see it. Now let's go back and check out our policies. Now, the policies are located in the e-commerce settings, so just scroll down a little bit to find them. And to open up these fields, just click on the box on the left. Now, keep in mind that these are not actual terms and conditions. These are just placeholder terms and conditions, as well as the rest of the policies I've written here to show you how they look once we actually view them from the customer's perspective. And to view this from the customer's perspective, I want to show you that these are the checkout policies, which they'll see at the checkout. Now, of course, uh, we have to see that stage of the process of buying something. And to do that, we're going to go to the sites. And in the top left, we're going to view the site from the perspective of the customer. So click up here, go down to view site, and we're going to go and try to buy something. So click on pet essentials. Well, at least I will. And then go to add something to carts. And then you're going to see a bit of a preview of the product you're buying, the quantity, the size. Then I'll add it to cart again. And from there, you'll see what your cart contains. And then you can confirm whether or not you want to proceed with your purchase. So I'm going to hit checkout. And then here are all the fields that the customer is going to have to fill out once they want to decide to buy something. And at the very bottom, you're going to see the terms and conditions and how they're actually a joke. Now, yours definitely have to abide by legal processes and the law. So make sure that you consult a legal professional before you actually go ahead and uh, make sure people purchase things. So keep that in mind. Now, when you're ready to publish your site, you just hit publish up here and then it will finally be live for the world to see. Of course, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you do need a domain to do so. And fortunately, you get one with the business unlimited plan, which is another reason to pick it up with our 10% discount to lighten the load on your wallet and allow yourself the flexibility to do what you want with your sites. And on that note, we wrap up this very brief tutorial where you learned to add pictures, pages, how to work a strip bar, include menu and that the U.S. apparently has 51 states. This is all the essential info you need to know to get yourself started and sell your products in just under an hour. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to help me make more videos like this one. It takes a lot of time and effort to put something like this together, so it would mean the world to me. And if you have any questions as well, do leave them down below and I will get back to you ASAP, whatever that means. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, take care and I will catch you in the next one.